Hello, this is Daron with I Can Develop Games, teaching you how to develop mobile games by outsourcing, no coding required. Okay, so today I'm going to show you Flurry. Flurry is basically an SDK that uh, your developer uh, can implement into the code and um, can be used as a great analytic tool, as I will show you in just about a moment. So after logging in, let's assume it's your first time you're doing this. So the first thing you want to do is click on applications. And let's create a new application. Basically, every application game that you create, you'll add to Flurry that uh, in return of Flurry will generate a key number that uh, you will give to your developer. And that's how it will be associated with the website. Um, here we got the option to select uh, what platform we want to use. We'll go with iPhone. And the application name, it really does not matter what it is. Um, it's only for your um, information online to be able to recognize this specific uh, game or app. I'll call it Fun Game. And Category, it doesn't matter exactly which one you choose. I'll go with Action. So here, the application has been created basically, and you have a unique application key that this is the number that I will give to the uh, developer, and uh, he will be able to associate uh, um, this game specifically with the uh, SDK that uh, he is going to incorporate into the application. Now, what I'm going to do is, I want to show you a little bit more information. Let's click on this application, this game. Okay, so the first thing you will see, and let's assume that you've already incorporated the SDK into a game and time has passed. Uh, it takes at least a day for Flurry to update uh, uh, the current day um, information. Here, what you can see, it's broken for, uh, per dates and the session, the number of times that the game has been played. And you can see here, lucky me, on February 13, I had almost 70,000 session. Now, this dotted line tells you that um, it hasn't determined yet the... Uh, final um, number for session as the day is not over yet. Um, I'm g just going to go over the uh, features that, is, uh, that I find basically uh, useful to what I need to do myself. The session frequency, it will tell you as it shows in the pie, one to two sessions you basically had about almost 98,000 um, uh, 98, um, uh, sessions or, or user I should say. And there's the rest information here as you can see. The new user map, something that I like, is highlighting the regions in the world that uh, um, showing you the uh, number of people that are using uh, the game. What I like about it, uh, you can click and get even a deeper information. In China, for example, you have 18,000 uh, users. And at some point, the, um, the data is limited, cannot give you more information that it's already showing here. That's about that. Let's go see what's under the usage tab. All right, it's giving information about new users. And on February 19, the new users that I had was close to 20,000. You can also tell it, uh, I'm sorry, this was a month. That's my mistake. Um, okay. You can see also the information per weeks, per days. All right. Yeah, that makes more sense now. By the hour, which is not supported uh, for this interval, I guess. Here is another detailed view of the information, basically, on the month of March, which is not over yet. So far, we have 89,000, just about 89,000 uh, new users. And this is again the uh, new users map that we uh, viewed just earlier. Active users, as it is, just tells you basically 
same users, uh, people that keep using your uh, game or your app. It's giving you information, self-explanatory. I'm just um, showing you um, where to find each element. Sessions, let's see if that's something of an interest uh, at the moment. Yes, by weeks, how many sections uh, have occurred. It will tell you how many times uh, the game has been played. Session length is how long each section is. Let's see what else. Audience. I think audience is one of the most important uh, information that you can get. Age is something that I usually uh, take notice of. And as you can see, this specific game, the most user base is between the age of 13 and 17. Gender will be as shown majority as female. Geography, let's look at that. And all right, 140 in Europe, 108. Okay, North America, 82,000. You can see in Europe, you have 140. Let's click on Asia. In China, I got 75,000 users. And language, I have a feeling we're going to know what it is. English and then Chinese. So how can we utilize this information? Basically, if I find that the user base is female between the age of 13 and 17, and let's say China would have been um, a great uh, target audience, which it is actually. So I would consider updating my game uh, localizing it to the Chinese market and maybe adding characters that are more uh, Chinese friendly to attract more users actually to um, to try and get and play uh, more with the game possibly adding coins or, or some form of monetization now here is another important part events within the events you'll be able to track basically any type of a button press inside your game for example um, if you are planning on uh, monetizing um, some games have the more button where you click and see uh, games that are offered for free you might want to see how many times people go in there and see um, another event might be the actual uh, play button or the tutorial button. You might want to see um, if people are actually watching the tutorial of the game to get a better understanding how it is. Um, it is known that the less people watch a tutorial, the uh, most likely they will uh, not play your game if they don't understand how it works. And here you can see I have an association of event uh, for the contact us. And it tells you basically, it gives you information um, of how many times uh, people have pressed on it. The how to, which is uh, the uh, tutorial, etc. The more and everything. Now, this is something your developer needs to um, uh, figure out uh, by reading the instructions of Flurry. But that might be a great reason why you want to give a developer an access to, uh, to the... Um, to a Flurry website so they can actually confirm and, and see that, uh, that this is actually functioning. Um, and that's really it. And this is basically all the information that uh, you might need uh, uh, analytically. The one other thing that I would like to show you is under the manage, I can create developers and uh, let's see if uh, I can do, I can invite users here and I can enter joe at joe.com. I can give him a certain role. If I give him an administrator role, they can have control and access to any, um, any location of, of, of the, uh, Flurry online dashboard. I can give him um, a viewer type of a role so they can just 
look at everything or I can give them a developer role and this is usually what I do. I limit the application access and I select which game or app I want to give this person access to because if I uh, employ several developers there's no reason that uh, all of them will have access to um, to games that they haven't developed there's absolutely no reason for that and I believe this is it I hope you enjoyed this uh, video I'll appreciate your subscription and if you haven't already checked my blog for a free gift on how to hire the best uh, game developers for your next uh, project thank you for watching and have a great day